This is Lily Harley, and you're listening to the Tim Owen Harley Show. Nothing is real. Welcome to the Tim Owen Harley Show. Thank you for listening to the Tim O and Harley Show. I am Tim O. Over there is my partner in mind crime, Mr. Ben Harley. Say hello, Harley. What is happening, people? Ben Howlin' Wolf Harley. How the hell oh, are you? I'm all right, Tim. <laughs> I'm doing good, my friend. Very good, very I good. I got a question about Howlin' Wolf for you later, so remind me. Okay, um, all right. Well, I like questions about a Howlin' Wolf. <laughs> I don't have any answers yeah, for yeah. any questions. Um, Okay. <laughs> Regarding Howling Wolf, Howling Wolf, but uh, I can do yeah. my best. I can do my yeah. best, or I can lie okay. through my teeth. This is about a certain Howling Wolf in our uh, one of our movies. Oh yeah, this week, so yeah, we got a lot to about that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I got something to talk to you about. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot to talk about that. I'm sure. Yes. So, uh, a yeah. couple things, Mr. Ben Harley. Uh, Ow, <laughs> real quick here, <laughs> yes, uh, like to uh, send our condolences to the family of uh, George H. W. Bush. Um, yeah, not George a fan. Herbert Walker. That's right. I was never a fan, but um, okay. it is what it is. But you know how I am. I don't really love or hate any of our presidents. I don't go down that sure. road. You know why? Because I don't want the job neither. Uh-uh. No, no, <laughs> you know, I don't want it. Uh, no, sir, yeah. I don't, Timo. Um, I will say I'm not trying to throw myself under the bus by any means. Remember, but <laughs> good. Yeah, George <laughs> Herbert Walker Bush was the first president I ever voted for. Really? I voted for that sucker twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I was 18 that that year um, at the election. I turned 18 and 88. So, uh-huh. yep, that was my first election. And, uh, yeah, and then I voted against him and that dreaded <laughs> Bill Clinton. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Did I just show my allegiance? Did I just put it up? No, there? you just showed who you vote for, voted nah. for a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, I did. All, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people did. You know, it's funny, though, is if you, uh, if you look at the tributes that people are yeah. giving to this guy, it's kind of funny to me. Because it's sort of it's it's we have short political his, uh, memories, you yeah, know, and yeah. stuff. And oh, yeah. I can't wait till George W. Bush dies and everyone like you know, oh yeah, oh what a what a statesman! Oh, it's they, like you were calling him the same things you were that. calling yeah. Trump, like. That's what they're doing ago. already. They're I know. saying he was the last great Republican president. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. But yeah, um, it's funny because I've seen some stuff and and I didn't want to post the, uh, anything because no. I've already seen attacks attacks on people already yeah. and people are yeah. like wow I'm just saying right the thing is I will say about him he was a little wishy washy for my taste mm-hmm. but he was when you look at his whole career not, not even just in politics but as a person and in the military it's a hell of a hell of a career mm-hmm. hell of a run and he did a lot of good things for this country. Certain other things here lately, I'm like, oh, God, he would have been a welcome treat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's what people are. Well, people's memory is always better than including ours. Well, right down to the fact, too, that that people will talk about we need to get rid of the Electoral College if their guy doesn't mm. win. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't think right, the Democrats exactly. were wanting to get rid of the Electoral College when <laughs> Bill Clinton won. Do you? <laughs> no, <sir. laughs> no, because it's, that's exactly what happened with them, too. It's just the way it is, you know. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. But anyway, that's and, and that's time. No, yeah, we're going to tease yeah, him about politics more than anything. Yeah. But he yeah. was our president. And, uh, yeah. You know, it's it's he did pass and he did serve us. You know, whether or not you thought he served us well, well, you didn't do it. So, (laughs) you know, I don't think I really don't think as much as everyone are armchair politicians. I don't think any of us want want these jobs. You know, as a matter of fact, wasn't it? Wasn't uh, it? uh, Speaking of George H. W. Bush and Bill Clinton, wasn't it Ross Perot that said anybody smart enough to do this job doesn't want it? I'm pretty sure <laughs> right, that's what exactly. he said. Yeah. So, um, oh yeah. As a matter yeah. of fact, I think and, I uh, that was a big deal back then when that went down with all three oh, yeah. people running three parties. And yeah, it, yeah. A lot of people voted for Mr. Ross. The shit out. <laughs> yeah, yeah scared the shit out of a lot of people. Did. <laughs> sure did, sure did. So, uh, well, yeah. yes, we'd just like yeah, to uh, so. say that. Couple more things, real quick, Mr. Ben Harley. We are doing yeah. not one but two conventions this year. Now we have all yeah. but 
really retired from doing conventions just due to, I think we're just getting old and cranky, you know, we don't do it, <laughs> yeah. but we, uh, yeah, that's true. But we've uh, had two buddies here. We got Mr. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go by their handles here. We got Mr. Dead Dick <laughs> Hammer and old school cinema Joe. And yeah. they're both doing shows. Now, one of those is going to be at the Corvette Museum again. So we're going back to Vet City Con. And that's yeah, at the are. end of January. Okay. Yes. So uh, look on Facebook or anything for Vet, V E T T E, City, like Corvette, Vet City, yes. uh, Vet City Con. Uh, check that out. Uh, I don't think they have a whole lot of guests so far announced for it yet, but no one, no one, Mr. Hammer. Uh, yeah. I'll come swooping in quick with a whole bunch of them at one time. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And then at the end of, what's it, at the end of May, I don't have the dates in front of me. I just wanted to tell people start snooping themselves for this. I'm not going to hold your <laughs> yeah. hand to the show. Just let you know. <laughs> but uh, also uh, a brand new show up in yes. Cleveland, uh, Retro Invasion Weekend. Yeah. And they say Cleveland rocks, Timo. That's right. So it'll be up in yes. Cleveland. Um Let's see That's here. That's going to be fun. Buddy. It yeah. is. It is. And our good buddy, Mr. Senior Danny Hicks is going to be there. Senior, yeah. So you yeah, know Daniel we're going to be making there. the trip. Yes. Yeah. yes. And they're doing a little um, tribute to Intruder, right? They, I, they, they, are speak, they are talking about doing something for Intruder. That's right. Uh, That's getting another heard. guest or two. Yep. Yeah. yep. And then um, let's see here. Also got a Just One of the Guys reunion, which is kind of nice. We have an old comedy uh -huh. Yeah, uh, if you remember, yeah. that's kind of a funny, funny flick. So I think the director's coming in, and a few other people. Diane Franklin nice. is coming in. It should be a good show. It should be a real good, nice, uh, fun show. That sounds like it. Yeah, yeah. It's shaping so, up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those so retro invasion weekend. That's at at the end of May, and then we got Vet City Con at the end of January, and that would be down in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Is the uh, right. Vet City Con? So there we go. Couple, couple nice guys putting them on too. So. <clears throat> That's yeah. right. We wouldn't be doing these yeah. if these weren't our buddies. Trust me, because right, yeah. I have nothing against the shows of today. Uh, we mm -hmm. were there in the beginning of a lot of these shows that are going on, and uh, yeah. wish them well. Uh, we're just, I don't know. We've, I guess, kind of. Uh, I don't want to say aged out of it. That's a little mean to us. Uh, I don't want to say petered out either. Uh, <laughs> I, I think they ran in their course with us. Does that make more sense? Yeah. A little, a little bit, bit, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so that's for hard, sure. hard for me to keep up with the party anymore, Mr. Ben Harley. <laughs> you are the party, Timo. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, sure am. So, <laughs> all right, let's get through some stuff here. I watch real quick, yeah, Mr. Ben Harley. I got a few things yeah. I'm going to try to go through and fast, and I got, uh, okay. yeah, one or two things I think you might find really interesting. So, I'm going to kind of save okay, those for the end the there. Okay, so first okay, up, thank you. Uh, on Amazon, here's some stuff that was on Amazon, uh, Amazon Prime. Uh, from 2015. Right. Yes, there's a movie that I, that's been floating around the streaming channels like Netflix and Amazon Prime for a while, and I decided to finally look at it. It's a movie called Treehouse. Okay. And uh, it's a kid and his brother. They're orphaned, I think, and they go to the woods. This is in Missouri, by the way. This takes place okay. kind of in the Ozarks, so not too far away from me here. And uh, these kids go out into the hills, woods, to meet their friends, high school friends, to shoot off fireworks, basically, and to get drunk and make out. Okay. And uh, so the kid and his brother never really Perfect find. Setup. Yeah, <laughs> kid and his brother never really find their friends, but they hear some weird stuff and find a treehouse, and they go up in the treehouse and they find a missing girl, a girl who had been Whoa. missing. Yeah. So then, why is she stuck up there? And what are those noises out in the woods? Uh, this is kind of, a, kind of a low budget, wrong turn type of movie with some fellows okay. out in the woods running around being jerks, kind of, um, you know, <laughs> yeah. it was okay. It was all right. I mean, if you watch a lot of modern films, you might hate this. Yeah. I don't know because I don't watch a lot of new movies. I, they, I go, Very small doses do I watch. I have very large mm -hmm. doses of classic and older <laughs> cult films. Very small doses of new. So I'm not fatigued with them as much as I'm not impressed. I'm sure. uh, right. But this was okay. It was all right. You know, it was, it, it's, logic wasn't really involved in the script. <laughs> what? You know? why? Yeah, why worry about something like that? Logic was busy. Why that, that, that slow down a movie? Yeah. Right, Logic's been busy for a lot of people these days, <laughs> but it's been it was busy with this movie too. But anyway, so moving on, it was, uh, okay. it was all right. I'm not going to recommend it more, but it, I think it was a little bit better than Lost Voyage. But uh, it's okay. okay. Again, <laughs> Logic was going to be, what's going on here? You know, 
Um, <laughs> for 1974, I kind of stuck with my James Bond freak Oh, yeah, you had been the freak A out. little bit, yeah, because they've had You're a little go double agent on me here in a minute. <laughs> I, I, well, I would never know because you can't tell me. <laughs> but if, I, if I start speaking more like Sean Connery and I'm convinced all women yeah. want me, uh, you're going to yeah. know just to get away from me. I got a little gun or a pistol <laughs> on me somewhere. Uh, yeah, from yeah. 1974, I watched the Roger Moore James Ooh, Bond film, okay. Man with the Golden Gun. Oh, yeah, that's a good, that's a good one. With Christopher Lee with three nipples. And if you remember, he has a superfluous <laughs> third nipple he does in this one. Um, actually, it deservedly oh, has a reputation why? of being one of the weaker Bond films. It's the second Roger Moore film. Yeah. The problem is that the production was rife with problems. It was uh, Moore didn't want to do stuff. He had to like beat up Hervé Villachez and throw a kid <laughs> off a boat. And they were trying to make him a little bit more cantankerous. They're kind of making him a little more tough. They're yeah, trying to. Yeah. I, I don't. I'm sorry, but I think Sean Connery is a little tougher than Roger Moore. Just my yeah, eye test yeah. a little bit. So uh, might be a good idea. Wrong actor, I think. But it was okay. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Went on another freak out, Mr. Ben Harley. Right. Um, Angio and I went on a George Powell freak out. Did you now? Yes. Wow. So okay. we watched When Worlds Collide. Ooh, yeah. yeah. We did that, right? We yes. did do that. That's right. So uh, I watched that, had some fun with that, and then jumped ship and went right over to War of the Worlds. <laughs> ah. 1953. So we watched both of them. That's good. Yeah. That's good. I, you know, I just love the, the way that shot and the color in that film mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. It's awesome. Absolutely. Just awesome. Absolutely. So. I love all the little sets and everything. <laughs> yeah. I do, too. I do, too. It looks neat. I love it, yeah. Those movies look yeah, like the does. ultimate play area when you're a kid. Like, if yeah, I could have yeah. that countryside setting and a couple spaceship toys, <laughs> I'd show oh. you a movie. And these days, yeah. that's <laughs> who Hollywood directors are. So, uh, let's see. <laughs> Moving on, Mr. Ben Harley. Here's one for you. From, yes, sir. From 2000, what? 17? Oh, what? 2017. Watched a movie called Johnny Frank Garrett's Last Word. Starring, uh, well, okay. Top build is Sean Patrick Flannery. Now okay. he's not really the star. It's another guy. It's a star, another familiar face, but that way is a, is a star. Okay. This is a true story about a guy who was wrongly put to death down in Texas. He's slow. And, uh, he basically, while he's being executed, curses everyone involved. He says, I didn't do this. I didn't do this. Um, and yeah, bad okay. stuff happens to everybody involved. So it's okay. the curse kind of comes true. Um, true story though. So there is a documentary that this movie is based off of called the last word. Really? I can't, okay. I'm having a hard time finding it. I can find like a used DVD on Amazon. That's about it. So I did what I never do. And I went on YouTube to look, see if I can find it. Aha! It's uh -huh. on YouTube. Aha! I actually retreated to YouTube for once. Uh, but for okay. some reason, every upload of this documentary, the audio cuts out at 53 minutes. Really? Yeah. yeah that's weird. Huh. Part of the curse, that's Ben awesome. Harley. Part it of the curse. It might be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the, and the, the, part, the part of the documentary that I saw, it, it was kind of a spooky story. It was kind of a spooky yeah. story. So it's called The Last Word. And the, the guy's name, again, was Johnny Frank Garrett or John Frank Garrett. So if you look up anything on a... If you like true okay. crime and creepy stories like that, uh, look, yeah. look it up and see what you think about that. So, okay. All right. Well, moving on here, Mr. Ben Harley, I got three more things here. And these things I think you're going to want to speak on just a little bit, or at okay. least you're interested in. Okay. Sure. So first up, uh, from the company, if you remember small town monsters, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. watch a documentary that is on Amazon called the trail of champ. It oh. is a documentary about Champlain. Champlain. Yeah. And Lake Champlain. Well, yeah. Champ. Oh, nice. Yes. So I have spent some time in Burlington, Vermont. So I do know a little something about the Lake Champlain and the fairies yeah. and all that. We used to play music there. My favorite oh. town in the United States to play music in was Burlington, Vermont, believe it or not. And my really? favorite town that I played music in was Burlington, Vermont, ladies and gentlemen. So there wow. you go. Yeah. <laughs> kind of wraps up nice, nice in a bow there for you. But yeah. uh, very, it very good, cool though? town. Uh, it wasn't too bad yet. A little, yeah. little drawn out. A little, yeah, little clumsy, but they're getting better, I think. like the, the, yeah. the It's just getting better. This is not as much um, data 
as there is like say on Bigfoot probably. So it kind of stretched yeah. it a little bit. Um, but some of these, like that real famous picture um, mm-hmm. of Champy, you know, like where it's backs to you and it's floating away. Yeah. Like I'm heads, sorry. Like, but, turned to one side. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, but my Rorschach tests are tests. That, that doesn't look like a head to me. That looks like something on its side and a flipper coming out. It doesn't yeah. look like a head to me at all. It looks like it still looks impressive. Don't get me <laughs> wrong. I mean, it still might be a creature, but it looks like it's on its side with this flipper coming up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like almost like what a, I don't know, don't geez, a shark or a whale would do if it's rolling over its side, kind of swimming, mm-hmm. and its flipper comes out and the flipper kind of buckles yeah. a little bit. That's mm-hmm. what it looks like. So next time you look at that picture, think about something on its side and that's a flipper coming up. What I'm saying by that is if you think that, it's actually more impressive because if that's the flipper, not the head, Jesus Christ, how big is that thing? You know, um, <laughs> but it wasn't, you know, yeah. I, I honestly, Ben Harley, uh, as much as fun as we have a Bigfoot and stuff, I think the odds of uh, creatures like this existing in the water are actually up a little bit. Um, just yeah. for the simple mm-hmm. fact, we don't know anything about underwater, you know, especially no. at night for crying out loud, you mm-hmm. know, what can no. be popping its head up at night, you know, on those lakes and stuff. Yeah, um, the, you, yeah, we're only seeing like a, the tip of the iceberg on sure. most, especially. And then we talk about the ocean. Good God, no, mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. it's not. It's so vast we don't even know. Right, right. You know, five percent. <laughs> if that, that think, yeah, maybe. <laughs> right. That, yeah. So not too bad. And that's though. awful in a way. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that sounds. I like that. Uh, my daughter Caitlin. Oh, I'm sorry, my daughter Zoe. I got so many now, Tim. I can't keep them. Up <laughs> right. um, yeah, my daughter Zoe. She she's a big uh, fan of like Champ and uh-huh. Nessie and stuff right. like that. So we we would always watch a lot. And she has books, uh-huh. some really nice books on uh, on Champ too. So right. And I love how they embrace it there. It's awesome. Love it. You yeah. Know, how well, the town embraces it. It's great. It's just so cool. Well, and I think I think that it's just kind of funny how people are like it's a plesiosaur, and then that makes that immediately makes people think that these people are crazy. It's like, are you compartmentalizing your brain to the point that you think just because some scientists found bones and said that was a only a dinosaur yeah. that it couldn't have been just real bones of something that exists? Right. Yeah. I mean, a di- dinosaurs only exist in our vocabulary. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it's just Mother Nature, man, doing whatever the hell it wants to do, no matter if we got words for it or not. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So if there yeah. is something that's similar to that, I don't know, a platypus kind of looks like a weird, you know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. When you think about it, it's like it could be a giant turtle. It could be anything, but it's there. There's something there. It seems yeah. like it. It seems like there's something there. So, uh, but very interesting. I find that stuff interesting. I'm not as fascinated oh, I as think, I am yeah. by Bigfoot because I don't find it that I don't know. I don't really find that out of the ordinary. That there's things we don't know about it. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's still interesting. Uh, it's more interesting because people like say it doesn't exist. Whereas I think in Bigfoot, yeah. it's more interesting because people say it does exist. But I think what's funnier is like, are you saying these things can't exist underwater? Huh, okay, Jacques Cousteau, <laughs> right. whatever. Uh, let's see here. Another one, Mr. Ben <laughs> yeah. Harley. Jerk Cousteau. Yeah. Like, huh? Another one on Amazon that I think you might enjoy this yeah. one. I think you might enjoy okay. this one. Yeah. It's only an hour long, little documentary called. Titanic, the lost signal. <laughs> okay. So the lost signal. A, yeah. Oh, signal. I thought I said uh, single. I I, like, I it sounded like that. I was mush mouthed a little bit. <laughs> okay. I'd be KB. Yeah. Be, be, be. yeah. How was that, boy? This is interesting because the documentary, a lot of it is about the Titanic and about the radio signals it was sending. Yeah. But okay. the, the hook is that apparently an amateur radio operator in South Wales picked up the distress signal. And nobody listened really? to him. The problem is, Holy shit. the problem is, South Wales is three thousand miles away. Yeah, that's going to take a little while to get there if they did. Well, they didn't believe him. <laughs> they simply I- didn't believe him. They said it took three days for the news to get to that town that the Titanic had even sunk, and the news was everyone survived. That was what? the news they got three days after. News did not travel well in the teens. Insane. I know. It did no. Not. Right. Oh, not at all. Right. No. So I find out this That's stuff. Crazy. I know. I find this stuff yeah. out. So apparently, the radio. Did you know the radio operators on a Titanic didn't even work for the White Star Line? They worked for the no, Marconi uh, Company. Well, okay. I think. I, yeah. So I the Marconi Company was a commercial radio advent, uh, venture, which basically said it wasn't. 
It wasn't put on the ship for safety reasons. It was put on the ship. It was put on the ship for luxury reasons so that rich people could get the stock market things and they could send, they could send messages to their families from the ocean, which was unheard of. And they were sending lots of messages from there too, I do believe. They were. And that's why they ignored some of those iceberg warnings Mm -hmm. because they said, stay off our frequency. We are busy. We we're going to be up all night sending these messages that people paid for for us to send. And it was all Morris code. Did you also know that it was the very first time in naval history that the SOS was used? Really? No. Yes. Mm -mm, I know that. Mm -hmm. Because it's 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 sad that all that had to happen, but so many great things came out of it. I guess if you want, I mean, right? It's morbid, I guess that sounds. It did though. It changed maritime history. Right. I mean, it changed the way things were done. Right. Because of it, you know. There's a lot is, of bad things. Just so many different things went wrong. Right. And it just avalanched into it, you know, like so, Well, it was yeah. it was yeah, there was there was mistakes made by the by the ships around it and everything. Yep. And the flares they didn't have a, they didn't have any yeah. like color code for flares or stuff, so they thought that they were just celebrating when they were yeah. shooting flares off and stuff like that. And uh yeah, there was one ship that was twenty miles, one was like sixty miles away. You know, yeah. and stuff. And I think the one that was 60 miles away was the only one who took heat. Here's the other thing. Most radio operators uh, shut down at, n- at midnight. Mm-hmm. So they, 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 they didn't have to wow. have their radios on at night. It wasn't about security. It wasn't about safety. Yeah. It was just about uh, just communication. It wasn't about anything else. They didn't, yeah. they didn't see, which just blows your mind today. It blows your mind today. Mm-hmm. But when you think about all the new ways we use the internet and technology and stuff, they were like, oh, huh. people 50 yeah. years from now are going to be going, those idiots didn't think of that like right away. You yeah. Know, and stuff. So, <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. I think that's what we're dealing with here. So, but pretty interesting yeah. uh, because they, the guy, the guy who picked up the signal, Marconi was so impressed. He met with him and hired him. Wow. Yeah. To work for <laughs> his like, company. This guy's the best ham operator in the well, yeah. in the world. And apparently the village is in a valley. So I mean, like oh, to wow. get that hey, signal so three thousand miles away. <laughs> now, Morse code radio technology will go a very, very far. It's like AM, it goes further. Yeah. But still, pretty interesting though. Little little hour long documentary. Again, Titanic the Lost Signal. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that on there. I'm going to have to take a look at that, Marfin. Okay, uh, let's see. That's right up my alley. That's it right is. Up my boring little alley. <laughs> I, I thought it was okay because it was short. It's not the most interesting thing. It really is not. It's really not the most. But but just a few of the tidbits in it are worth it. Just yeah, to hear oh, it. So, sure. uh, I see. love that stuff. And I, you know, they, they found out so many more things over the years. Right. So. It's more part to the puzzle, right? right. There. Well, knowing that they worked for Marconi and and all that. Yeah. And, I don't know, it, was, it was interesting. Uh, let's see, real quick here, Mr. Ben Harley, I forgot to mention yeah. this one. I don't remember what year this is. I'd say this is 1958 or 59 or something. There's a movie that oh, was on, also on that. Amazon Prime <laughs> called Mutiny in Space, uh, oh. which is what it sounds like. There's a space station on the moon, and they come across a mean, cranky fungus. And there's a fungus <laughs> among us. <laughs> and there's malaria oh, in the area. Boy. <laughs> but they, but the fungus, the fungus starts. It's uh, this kind of reminds me of the beginning of the green slime when there's like fungus and stuff getting on people. Uh, and but yeah. then they turn into the green slime monsters, so that makes it a little different. This is basically like a fungus taking over the space station, uh, and and the 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 like the guy that's running the space station has been in space too long, so he's kind of lost yeah. his his noodle. So he's one of those guys that says, there's nothing wrong here. You're not sending me back to Earth. I'm staying on duty, damn it. So it's one of those types of movies. So the fungus is taking over while the guy in charge ain't helping at all. At all. (laughs) So um, it it was okay. It was all right. It was on Amazon Prime. Again, called Mutant in Space. Now, here's the last one, Mr. Ben Harley. Last up. Uh, Last week, we talked about Halloween 4, right? Yes. So this week, yes, Angio and I went back and watched Halloween Five: oh. Revenge of Michael Myers. Mm, okay. With a, with Don <laughs> Shanks as My man. Uh, yeah as as Michael Myers. The coma. The uh, coma. Here's something about the mask, Mister Ben Harley. Uh, the reason it uh, isn't the same mask as in ever. Part Four is because yeah. it wouldn't fit Don Shanks' head. 
Okay. So, and the other thing is when uh, when uh, Loomis is beating the stein out of uh, Michael Myers when he, when the chain drops on him, two by four. Yeah, yeah he broke his nose. Yeah. So they had to cut oh, really? the mask nose off and oh, glue it back God. on. So if you watch the movie and the nose looks like it's glued on, it is. Yeah, it is. It is glued on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh God. Uh, let's see here. This was the movie, I believe. Now, was this the? This was the what? The first movie where they introduced Richie Sambora in the black boots. <laughs> yeah, was, he came off of a bus. Yeah, no, no, this is it. Yeah, this is the one. Great. So he, they, there wasn't. I just watched four, but I didn't think there was anything in four. No. Nope. Uh, mm-hmm. Now no. here's what's even funnier: the writers of this stupid movie didn't even know what that was about. They just put him in there to take care of later. They're going to explain it later. They didn't even <sighs> know what they were going to do with him at all. Um. Oh yeah, the same tattoo as Michael Myers. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and the tattoo thing that explains too. it all. Yeah, the tattoo <laughs> thing. I, I I told Angio. I said this is where things were for me. Like four, honestly, was enough. Four was like, oh no, 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 no. I mean, you know, how I was. I no, no. Yeah. Then you then you can imagine a guy like me who didn't enjoy four like you did, who got yeah. the five. Oh yeah. Uh Boy, yeah. Ben Harley, uh, if I had a <laughs> if I had a potato gun, there would have been holes in the screen. I'm gonna tell you right now. Yeah. The the it's oh my god, it's just ter- um, I don't want to say the whole movie is terrible because no, I think it's, it's got, actually it's got its moments. It, it does. really does. It's got even yeah. better moments than I think the fourth mm-hmm. one does. It does. It does. Um, it's got some good characters that you actually kind of care about too. You mm-hmm. did. So. Yeah. It, but uh, yeah, the inter- here's an interesting thing about it though. You know when Michael Myers is driving in that movie, when yeah. he's driving the the main kind of like the main girl in the film, when he's driving her yeah. and she doesn't know who he is. She thinks it's her boyfriend or whatever. He's and he's got, got that weird mask. He's yeah. got that weird mask on. Did you know that that was supposed to be a Ronald Reagan mask? Ronald Reagan it looked like a Rondo Hatton mask. <laughs> it did look like it, but it was supposed to have been a Ronald Reagan mask, and the producers really? and directors decided <laughs> against it. Because they did not want any political subtext. Now, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> if those people were talking to you today, they would tell you that that's quite opposite. That well, that yes. mask was uh, was representing the homeless problem that we had, and uh, whatever, whatever, you know. So <laughs> I just thought it was funny in lieu of that Eli Roth show yeah. where everything was about the politics of the day, which is complete nonsense. Mm-hmm. People didn't obsess over like we right. do today. It was. Yes. So, uh, but anyway, so that thought that was interesting that they did not put the Reagan mask on him in order to avoid being even accused any of kinda. any kind of political subject. That's crazy. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So, but it's funny. It's good though. Good and funny. <laughs> uh, you know, I told Angio. I did tell Angio uh, that maybe we'll go back and watch the sixth one with the director's cut because I've only seen no. Do. I've only seen the director's cut once. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm not Awful. talking about the theatrical. Me and you went and saw the theatrical one both. I believe. Yeah. And it's bad mm-hmm. enough, but the but at least the theat- at least the director's cut brings back Richie Sambora and tries <laughs> to tie it in. Okay, yeah, it does. Um, yeah, yeah, this one, buddy. Yeah, I um, I don't have a whole lot to say. I guess. I mean, there are scenes in this film that I really like, uh, mostly to do with Loomis. Mm-hmm. You know, he I think he holds a lot of it together. Um, but uh, I guess the only thing I really enjoyed about this one that I thought was a little bit different than the rest was that like during the daytime, you can see him lurking around all over the place, mm-hmm. like throughout the movie. And I, and I did enjoy that, but uh, what happens for me, I like about, I don't know, maybe half of this film. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of it just comes off the wheels, man, or the rails. Like just the yep. wheels fall, fall off. It's just, like the whole Richie Sambora thing. Now at the end, after he gets broken out, um, Daniel Harris's character stands there and she starts doing the Loomis thing, like the crying, like, oh no, no. Right, yeah. Which I thought was cool, but I was so upset by what was going on about him being broken out of prison by Richie Sambora that I could care less. You right. know what I mean? And I did see the ending of this you know, during the Halloween season mm-hmm. and it just still made me angry, angry, yeah. like yeah. angry because this is what it did for me, Timo. Then for, what you're doing to me is you're shitting on the whole rest of the Halloweens, even number one for right. me, because right. you're telling me 
that this was about druids and I'm no, I'm out. I'm out. Right. I'm out. I don't care. I don't want to hear about druids. I don't, even though I know it's in part two at, at points, but I just like, it still wasn't like so heavy. <laughs> I, I can't do it. And, uh, well, I told Angio that in fairness, the novelization of Halloween, the whole beginning of it, it's all about druids. Now, I read yeah. it. I, I I read it when I was like in grade school. Like, I only read the beginning of it because I'm like, what is this? And I thought it would open up with Loomis going to, or or, or I'm sorry, I thought it would open up, you know, in the past where yeah. you know young Michael kills his sister, just like the movie. No, it was a whole education system on druids and stuff like that. Now, now, before anybody says anything. It's a novelization <laughs> of the film. So yeah, I don't exactly, think that the, yeah. the book has any rights over the movie or something like that. I'm just saying it was there somehow. Besides that, I told Angie, I said, the problem <laughs> I have is that in Halloween, there was no rhyme or reason to what was going on. Jamie Lee mm-hmm. Curtis was not his sister. There was no, there was no family murder nepotism going on. There was nothing like that happening. And she's like, I thought it was her sister. I go, nope. They introduced all the family plot stuff in the second one. I said, the first one, Jamie Lee Curtis goes up to the Myers house to drop the key off. And he yeah. sees her and starts obsessing and stalking her after he sees her drop the key off. That's pretty much how it goes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know any other way to explain it. Right. Really. That's all there he is. Just goes, it's, yeah. Yeah. Her. That's yes. Her. <laughs> he goes back to his <laughs> yeah. hometown he goes back to the house he grew up in, which is for sale, abandoned, or whatever. And uh, he sees her basically trespass. So yeah. he, in turn, trespasses on her. You know, And that's <laughs> basically all it is. I said, And that's what made a lot of it frightening. So once you started adding all this nonsense to it, uh, I didn't even really like the sister part in the second one. I, it was okay. I mean, I guess, but it gave you a reason. And sometimes the more right. reasons you give, less scary it gets. You know what I mean? No, I'm not I, I didn't it either. Hard. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's okay. It's all right. Um, I, but I will say what I did like, and they did, this is not the original, but, you know, when they added for, for TV, I do like when Loomis goes for the hearing and then he also goes up and confronts Michael. Mm-hmm. Uh, I liked that. Mm-hmm. And I still do. And I know a lot of people that, don't or you know but for me i like that because <laughs> right. he wells up and he says you fooled him right not me right and it just added for me that just added to the the tension between them two and how much you know just and how much loomis was obsessing right. over him right loved it you know so but yeah the sister thing i don't know I, i'm okay with it because i like part two so much but i i if if that wasn't a thing, I would be okay too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm I'm cool with it. I just thought for me it was unfinished business. That made it scary. Yeah. If yeah. I got no connection with somebody who wants to kill me for another reason than he than he messed up the first time, that's way yeah. scarier to me than it's my brother in law's third cousin yeah. twice removed and he's coming after me for some druid reason. Like what? Yeah. yeah. But I do agree that this one was like what? And then to me the sixth one is like I'm fascinated by it only because it's awful. And then there's a director's cut that's just as awful, but it adds more weird shit to the story. So you kind of watch it going, God, this is what they were going for. But I'm gonna tell you one thing. If you saw the sixth one in a theater without that direct, Mm. I mean, and they cut out all the Richie Sambora stuff, what you basically got was some bizarre hybrid of a Halloween film where he gets beat with a pipe at the end. Yeah. I Mm -hmm. mean, that's it. And there's really the weirdest of weird edited together stories in that film. So, but yeah. so we we're on five and maybe maybe six will hit. But you know why not? It's a freak out. Sometimes you don't know what to watch. Sometimes hey, you don't have to look at. Yeah, do it sometimes. Got to you know? do it. I bitch about this stuff. I might as well go back and confirm my bitchiness about these movies. So. <laughs> confront these films head on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what you got? What did you confront you this week, fight? Mr. Ben Harley? What did you confront? Oh, uh, let's see, Tim. I, you know, I, um, I didn't get to watch a whole heck of a lot, Tim. Some stuff, but like not a lot of it is super horror related. But I'll see how horrible I can make it. Okay. I, I'm still on my Iron Fist freak out, which has been good. <laughs> I'm a little bit ups. I'm a little bit upset though because I saw. Um, it's not on Netflix, um, but they have. It's I think it's maybe called Marvel Defenders. Okay, and it looks like it has like Daredevil, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, and oh gosh, I can't remember who the girl is. Um, and I apologize. Uh, 
but it doesn't look like he has a suit on in that uh, either. So mm-hmm. I'm, mm, I'm, I'm going to be a little upset if he doesn't. I, I will be because right. I don't. I like the guy. I like the character. I like all of it. But I don't need to see a guy run around in a flipping hoodie. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, these are superheroes for a reason. Let's do something different then. Make a different character it's called Hoodie Man. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. I'm very touchy about that. I'm sorry. It's just, uh, right. yeah, my last season of Sopranos, Tim. We just started that, Wendy and I. Oh, and, okay. Uh, it's been pretty good. Um, you know, it's. <laughs> I Ooh, really is felt there any that. backstabbing in that show? Um, a little. Okay. Just, right. just a little. Sure. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't know who to trust him. Oh, geez, Louise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, but one of my favorite beloved characters uh, got killed at the end of last season. And, oh, no. Um, yeah, she was real easy on the eyes to me. Oh, so no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she was a good character, too. More easy in your eyes than James Gandolfini? Uh, a little bit. Wow. I like him. He's all right. You wow. know, it's. And I feel bad now because I've grown to really like him, you know, mm-hmm. as a character and an actor and stuff. And I'm just like, wow, I feel, you know, I, well, I felt bad for him, you know, even before I watched The Sopranos. Because, right. you know, it seemed like he was, his trajectory was going pretty high. You oh, know, yeah, he was doing great. Yeah, good actor. You know, yeah. and I think he was going to go on to do some more what, sure. films and things. So, yeah, it's sad. But, uh, you know, I've, I've enjoyed it. It's a little different. It's kind of like a dark comedy at times mm-hmm. with, without a whole lot of ha-ha funny more. But like, what? Right, huh? right. But, you know, I, which is okay. I enjoy that. It's different. Sure. Sometimes maybe not for the best. <laughs> Sometimes it might leave you scratching your head, but that's okay, too. So Right. Um, uh, Timo, I've uh, also got to watch a few things here recently. Um, I've been putting on uh, Pluto TV on my Roku in the back. Oh, yeah. And you know that they have the Mystery Science um, Rift Tracks channel, and, it, right. and we I think we spoke about this before. It just plays all day. You can't rewind or pause or right. anything. It's just live TV. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's been fun. I've I got to watch um, the other day. Uh, it was uh, I don't know if, if it's Attack of the Batwoman or oh, the Wild World what? of Batwoman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got that. that. I'm probably on Blu-ray somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I watched that the other day. That was good. I, it's it's. Been a little while since I've seen it, <laughs> but uh, not too bad. What they do is seen as so funny, and it's like really uh, weird because it like goes into this weird chase scene, and, but it's like banjo music or something. Uh-huh. And then they they said something like stop because they they do it a few times. And they're like stop it because this is starting to make the monkeys look good, <laughs> <laughs> right? And I'm like that's awesome because and then I was thinking the same thing. I'm like this looks a lot like a monkey sequence or something, <laughs> right. you know, but a bad monkey sequence. Right, so. right. Uh, and I have been keeping up on my monkeys lately. It's been really good. There's been some some pretty funny ones. Not so much horror lately. So I'll get back to you with the next okay. horror episode. But uh, yes, uh, so I went from um, Mystery Science uh, uh, over to the Rift Tracks channel, and I watched um, uh, the shorts. Um, okay, yeah. And, and some of these I hadn't seen before. Uh-huh. And man, I tell you what, Tim, oh, some of them. I think the one. You've probably seen the one about measurement measurement man. Uh, oh God, yeah, yeah, <laughs> ooh, ooh, yeah that's, that's a scary a, one. Ooh, yeah, yeah. But there was another one I had never seen, and it was about these just two ladies setting up for a kindergarten class. Okay. And you just, oh my God, it was one of the funniest I've ever seen, and it was awful, and it probably it had to be how oh, sixties, hmm, late sixties, early seventies, or whatever. But uh-huh. what these two ladies went through to set up. This like just a little playroom, but oh my god, it just took them. It's probably like an hour long, but it was funny. Oh uh-huh. my god, it was just hilarious. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't think I've seen that also, one. Yeah. And also having a, uh, you know, my mom was a teacher, uh-huh. so just some of it just it just caught me really. Uh, it was fun, you right. know. It just it caught me off guard some of it, but uh, yeah, um, I, I don't know exactly which one it was called, so I apologize. But uh, yeah, um, if you ever thought two <laughs> ladies putting together a kindergarten class could be funny, two ladies, uh, not one, two ladies, two ladies two. doing it, huh? Hmm. Yeah, and one was the older school marm, and the other. There was the younger. So oh, there was I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Passing the baton a little bit, and then there was. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I, I guess gotcha. that's what you call. Kind of like Bailey and Les Nessman on WKRP. <laughs> Les just doesn't want to hand that baton off. Not too sure no. if she can handle the news. Yeah. Gotcha. Exactly. Gotcha. Or if you can set them bricks up in the corner. There needs <laughs> yeah. to be more flow for play as well. That's <laughs> gotcha. all it's about. Flow. flow for play. Gotcha. That yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Okay. All right. 
One last thing I got, Tim, right. and I think this is something that I sent to you as well, my buddy. Um, uh, <laughs> there's a gentleman that puts stuff up on YouTube. Um, uh, it's called uh, You Have ne Never Seen. And oh, yeah, it's yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. This is the one I sent you about. Um, and it's about, all about movies. You've never seen this movie or You've something? You've never seen yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this one was about the smog monster, Godzilla right. versus the smog monster, or Hedorah, however you want to do it. Um, right. But uh, I really enjoyed this, not only because the guy was on my side of things, which kind of makes him borderline genius, <laughs> uh -huh. but uh, yeah, no, um, I've... I've been a big fan of Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster for a long time. Sure, I saw yeah. this theater, saw this in the theater when I was a young lad, and uh, uh -huh. my poor grandfather who fought in World War II and in the Pacific took me to see it. And that guy probably thought, "What <laughs> in the hell?" Because I was thinking to myself, "What in the hell?" At you know, yeah, yeah. three, four years old. So, but God bless him for taking me. Anyways, right. um, yeah, I, I like this movie and. I don't think it's one that's really talked about a whole heck of a lot. Mm -hmm. And I do think it is my favorite Godzilla film. Now it's not the first one. Okay. Well, let's, let's get that straight. All right. Um, mm. But um, the first one was completely different. Okay. And, and Godzilla's was probably one of the only, well, not the only, but one of the few characters that was so popular that had to be brought back, even though he was stripped to the bones mm -hmm. you know, in the right, first film. Right. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So uh, what I liked about this little video the guy put out, though, he kind of goes through the history of Godzilla up into the smog monster. And I think he does a really good job. There's some funny stuff in it, you know, too. Mm -hmm. But I think he really hits the nail on the head on this one where a lot of people, um, I don't know, I think they look past this one for mm -hmm. some odd reason. But I think this one is awesome. It's just, even as a kid, as weird as I thought it was, I still think it was a good movie. Uh -huh. It's got a little bit of everything in it, for, especially for a little kid. It's I a mean, different, I, you know. it's different. Oh, yeah. It's very it's different, different than the other yeah. movies. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely more of a bizarre, hippie kid <laughs> movie, you yeah. know, and I remember yeah. I saw it uh, at my grandma's house. Like, yeah. I mean, it couldn't have been more than I don't know. Well, 1980 or something. I mean, it was, it was a kid, yeah. you know. And um, yeah. I do remember thinking this is a different Godzilla, Godzilla movie. <laughs> Not that like the one with like Jet Jaguar and all that wasn't yeah. bizarre, wasn't and bizarre, yeah. but this one was. This one seemed different. Like it stuck out yeah. a little bit. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's definitely bizarre, but I think it's a very good film. It's mm. shot awesome. Like mm -hmm. you know the the. Um, DVDs and stuff look great of it. Now I'm not sure if I had this on Blu-ray. I think I might. I, uh, I think know. I gave it to you on Blu-ray. Pretty <laughs> yes, sure. Yes, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So, but I just think it just the way that the movie looks uh, is great, and I just appreciated this guy's take on it. And like he says at the end, this is the one that you should see out of all of them. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the first one. Come on, okay. But right, like, there's, right. I enjoyed it, and if anybody gets a chance, just look it up on YouTube. It might make you want to see it. Might make you not. So. Right. But uh, yeah, it's called. Movies you haven't seen, and I will speak on one other that I did watch. Okay, um, was the Warriors? He did um, one on the Warriors, which I thought you know, but for guys like us growing up, the Warriors was like you know gospel yeah. of movies. You right, know? right. It's kind of hard uh, to watch some of these things that were yeah. clearly put together by maybe somebody in their late twenties or something yeah. who they're they're really letting people in on something of their age. And to us, yeah. it's like, man, we've seen that movie a hundred times. Yeah. But then you do, you're right. You have to appreciate what they're doing because yeah. they're doing what, what we're doing kind of in a way. Oh, exactly. Yeah. And he just, and he really gave, showed it the love that it deserved. Like, mm -hmm. like he would go through every gang, not I'm sure there was a few that he pissed out on, but you know, right. like a lot of the gangs that, you know, that they showed on film and stuff, you know, not the ones way in the back, you know, but, mm -hmm. um, and he went through and showed the, like the logos, <coughs> excuse me, the logos of every one. And I would pause and like, wow, I never even saw it. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and all the names and all the, you know, which I thought was really cool, but he goes through and, um, just kind of lays it out. Like he did the smog monster one, which I think where he's showing a lot of love for the film, which, you know, we all grown up, you know, loved it too. Oh, yeah. For the most part. I'm sure there's people out here who didn't, but uh <laughs> I just, I'm sure there is too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I just think it's it's great to see those movies put in the light that they deserve, you know. Right. Too. So and hopefully if the younger hopefully we get some younger generation to make some more films like the Warriors that are kick ass instead of the ones we've been getting lately. So right. oh, if yeah. it inspires one kid 
God bless it. You know what I'm saying? Please. Right. So, but uh, that's all I got, Tim. That's all you got. That's all I got, my man. All right. Yeah. Let's get to our official yeah, little films yes. on Mr. Ben Harley. Uh, all right, buddy. I'm going to go an opposite opposite chronolo- chronological okay. order this week. Uh, first we're go up, the future to the past. The future to the past. Yeah. All we're right. sliding down. We hit the wrong <laughs> spot in Candyland. Uh, so <laughs> nice. we're going down the ladder. Uh, let's see, from 1966. Okay. Technically, but it was released in February of 67. We have the Hammer film, The Witches. The Witches. The Witches. Okay, let me get out movie guy and do a real short storyline synopsis here. For The Witches. Here we go. The Witches, yes. Following a horrifying experience with the occult in Africa, a school teacher moves to a small English village only to discover that black magic resides there as well. (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is. I'm gonna have a hard time with this movie, Ben Harley. I'm gonna start off with that. I'm gonna have a real hard okay. time with this because okay, it is your basic standard witch story in a yeah. way. I, we've seen this type of story so many times where an outsider comes into a yeah. town that is howling. Well, yeah, the town. <laughs> well, yeah. Sort of like that too, but but it's somebody yeah. comes into a town that is run by a bunch of witches or yeah. devil worshippers, and really yep. back then it was kind of all mixed together yeah. a little bit. Um, now I'm going to say that because it bothered me because it was like kind of boring me. Okay, but the problem okay. is is that from 1966, 67, it wasn't like this was. This feels like a lot of movies that came out after it as well. So I want to be okay, fair sure. here right up front and say I do understand that this movie is a lot like films that came after it. Okay. okay I just sure. don't have the the uh, luxury of having that point of view. I, I, <laughs> I just don't, period. So it's going to be really hard for me. So I am prefacing everything with that. Okay. Okay. Now the film stars Joan Fontaine. Yeah. Yeah. She's an old, obviously, Hollywood actress. Uh, she's yeah. in Rebecca, Suspicion, Jane Eyre. I like the movie Jane Eyre. I like that one, oh, too. Oh, I've seen that one there. Yeah, it's huh. pretty good. Um, yeah, I like her in this, actually. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, this was her last film, and apparently she bought the rights uh, to the book. There was a novel or a book that she brought the rights to, and she brought it to Hammer. Oh, really? So, yeah. So, this being a Hammer film. So, this might explain one of the things that bothered me. I'm going to go into a little bit more here in a minute. Okay. It, it didn't It didn't have that Hammer cast and crew feel to it that no, some no. of the other ones did. So, that could explain it, the fact that she brought the story and the book rights and everything to the project. She might have had more say than normal over things. Sure. I don't know oh. for sure. Written okay. by Nigel, the abominable snowman, the Himalayas, Neil. Ah, you gotta like that. Yeah. 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 So, um, you like that guy. You right. had him over for dinner. <laughs> right. So, uh, again, hammer from 1966, 67, the witches, uh, I had seen yeah. this before, I think once or twice. Had you seen it before, Mr. Ben Harley? Uh, no, no, sir. Okay. I have not. Right. Yeah. What, what did you yeah. do? Oh, uh, yeah, she, you know, Tim, I, I don't mind this film. Mm. Um, I kind of, uh, well, we'll, <laughs> I don't want to put the cart in front of the horse, but let's, yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll speak about some. Yeah, get the carrot out later. there. Get him out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but no, I, um, I, I kind of like this movie. I mean, now it's not like overtly, it's not like, uh, gory there's you know no. it's not it's you know or anything quite like that mm-hmm. it's not super wordy for ben Hardy, but a little bit you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. you know these english they think there's something they think they're so smart <laughs> they so. think they can use their speech to communicate <laughs> yeah. a message yeah. whatever yeah. snobs they- <laughs> you had to give us English. <laughs> right. But, um, right. <laughs> yeah, it's not uh, so it wasn't too bad like that. And the story enough for me, I mean, like you were saying too, it's we've seen this before yeah. so many yeah. times. But it, uh I think it was put together okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's just there's enough suspense or enough, you know, like oh, I think that might be the person or wait, wait, no, there you know. Mm-hmm. So there's a uh how do you call it, you know, the red herring, right? So Yeah, um, there's lots of red herrings running. There's, a, there's yeah. a lot in this. Yeah. yeah. So um which is okay. Which is all right. But I, I I do get what you're saying. Like he could have maybe used, uh, I don't know, maybe a Christopher Lee, Donald Pleasance, maybe or someone. Yeah, or there. Michael Ripper, give me Michael somebody. Michael Ripper, give everybody. Me somebody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but 
other than that, I I was okay. Mm-hmm. I really was. I thought some of it was was pretty cool. Um, some of it, uh, the witchy stuff was kind of done well. It wasn't so much in your face or whatever, but some of it was like, oh wow, like she's looking for footprints for to to make a point of, of something that happened. I'm not. I don't want to give away too much, right, or whatever. To, right. But but then the sheep come along <laughs> and take out all the you know it's little things like that it's right. kind of omen like right, you right, know what i mean right. so yeah but um i was okay now tim i don't know if you want to add any more before well i had a different opinion of it and and yeah, i think yeah. what i came into it with pretty uh feeling okay about what i was about ready to see yeah. i know i'd seen it before been a long time don't remember much except it was a hammer witch movie and yeah um i like a good witch tale like a good yeah. story and stuff, uh, but I, it just depends for me. It's not yeah. casting spells and magicians and things like that aren't always my favorite type of sure. horror story or fantasy story or something like that. But still, I was think going in thinking, yeah, okay. And it just proceeded to just, it bored the hell out of me. <laughs> I mean, and I like yeah. this stuff. And it, it yeah. just, uh, it really seemed to me, just, just okay. to me, like it was... Overly dramatic for the stale material sure. in a way. And it there was just like nothing new there. And again, remember, in fairness, it was probably felt a little more fresh when it came out than yeah. it does now. Oh, yeah. I simply and I try very hard to try to see these movies from the prism of when they came out. This is why I'm even saying it over and over again. That sure. I'm gonna criticize this, but I do understand I'm being a little hypocritical. On yeah. it, you know, um, it just seemed like it kind of it just sort of limped along. Uh, to me, it was painfully obvious who was who, what was going on, and everything. And then it just sort of devolves to the end, which we can talk about here in a, mm-hmm. in a, in a minute if you want. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I but that's that's about. really. <laughs> And it bothered me. And me and Angie were sitting there watching this, you know, and at first, you know, we're watching. And then I got to talking a little bit because it was something yeah. would remind me of something else. And the next thing you knew, I was really enjoying the conversation a hell of a lot more than the film. And when that happens, there's one of two things. It's either something I've seen before or a bunch of times. And we just have this on fried candy while we're hanging out. Yeah. Uh, like when I watched yeah. Waterworld. We watched Waterworld a couple weeks ago. Yeah, we talked through a lot of that, too. But it's Waterworld. I mean, <laughs> It's, it's a not, lot. Going on. It's not it's pressing any IQ points you might have lingering around, you know. And but uh, the, for this one though, it's a little different because sometimes I usually lean forward into the TV with a grin on my face. Andrea yeah. will confirm that for me. I do that a lot when I'm watching some of these movies. Yeah. This one, I kind of I'm gonna call her and ask. <laughs> yeah, well, almost <laughs> in the middle of it. Yeah, I, I just looked. I was like, God, this is just. It's sort of forgettable. Like everything is just sort of happening, and it's feels more like a British television soap opera, like a dark shadows or something, yeah. which I've never that. liked. I never mm-hmm. liked, I don't know why I tried. I just, I just never liked dark shadows. I never liked any of this stuff. Um, now I'm going to fl- slide to the end here because witches are known for dancing around naked in the woods. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now we all know the Puritans put them to death because of that, because they were jealous and they didn't want yeah. to be aroused. It was not fair to be aroused. Back then. <laughs> Silliness. Um, but they kind of like the big climax is really uh, muted by this yeah. awful, ridiculous wannabe fully clothed orgy. Yeah. Which made the film maybe a hard G at the end of the day. And it kind of reminded me of two different things. One, <laughs> a hoedown. Well, one was the linguini noodly fight with uh, Bell Lugosi and the devil bat. <laughs> and the other one was in the giant spider invasion where Barbara Hale and that dude go f- <laughs> rolling down the hill and they, and they roll on top of each other almost on purpose. It seems like, <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll hand it off to you for a second. I mean, here's the thing. It's tough because I think I should like it. Should in yeah. quotes. I should like this, you know? Well, I kind of went in, um, 
not with super high expectations. I really didn't. You right. know, I thought, well, you know, the voodoo stuff at the beginning, I was like, oh, well, maybe. And then mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay, this is, you know. But I, I, I really did. I, I started to enjoy it. I, I mean, I didn't think it was the greatest thing I've ever seen by any means. But mm-hmm. I, you know, I did not mind it. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of liked where it was going. But then um, it, it, it didn't really go where I thought it was going to. Uh, part of it. Mm-hmm. At least, you know, I, I kind of was hoping that they were going to stick with the kids mm-hmm. being like, which the witches and you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I, I was, I was like, wow. Okay. I, you know, but then it, it took a different turn. And then I thought, okay, I see what's happening now. Mm-hmm. And I was on board Tim until, <laughs> until the reveal. And then the reveal really peeled petered out like into this long drawn out explanation of everything and then and then it conked me on the head with (laughs) the dance uh, Uh sequence yeah and then the way it just all ended abruptly which they all you know and we we know this a lot of these older films and you know but i'm just like that that whole scene ended abruptly and then it just was like ah i don't know you know and then then that really killed it for me so I, I enjoyed it up until the reveal, which I, you know, I was like, okay, I, I saw most of the people. I was like, oh, yeah, that's, you know, okay, well, there's, okay, there's more than one witch, okay? Sure. I, I was kind of hoping the one that, the reveal, she wasn't. And so that also was like, ah, fooey. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think I would have enjoyed this film a lot more if it would have stuck on the path with maybe the kids being the witches, the mm-hmm. two kids mm-hmm. maybe, and a couple more. And then, um, I, I just was, a, the reveal was a letdown. And then the big dance scene was even more, that was a knockout punch for me. So, right. Yeah. I well, don't know. even Nigel Neal, the writer, the guy did Obama snowman Himalayas. I mean, even he yeah. was not happy with it. He wrote the screenplay based off the book and, yeah, I think they were thinking that they they really wanted something better at the end. I don't think any of them were satisfied, you know, sure. with how it with how it really turned out. But once you got money invested in a project, once it's done, you well, gotta let did. it go. Everything is almost there. But here's the problem. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. go back to this again. This just it had it. Well, it was a Hammer movie, but I just didn't see a lot of the Hammer trademarks. I didn't see a lot of the stock company cast that they have. I didn't see yeah. a lot of. I mean, maybe I wasn't, maybe I was so bored I wasn't looking for it. I didn't even see a bunch of plunging necklines. No, there was none of that. Yeah. I was very sad about that. So, so (laughs) I just, it just sort of, it fizzled with me. Now, that being said, uh, this is a DVD Bob super special. Super special, my friend. It's got the blue around it. It's got some blue (laughs) around it. It's special. And it looks, it looks pretty good. This is not the yeah. greatest thing of all time I've ever seen, but it, it looks, it's good. It's definitely better than a DVD and all that. Um, That's so, awesome. So it's there. So if you're at a show yeah. and you see our good friend, Jimmy the lips, <laughs> you know, man in his table, sleeping, you know, taking a nap yeah. or anything like that, <laughs> you can either hard. lift it off the table or try to pay for it. If he, if he does wake yeah. up, be, be careful <laughs> because sometimes we play tricks on him and we paint eyeballs in his eyelids. <laughs> so you and can't, for his forehead. Yeah, so you can't really, he's tell. always leaning down. Yeah. Like. yeah. But we give him village of the damned, uh, eyes. So it's, if you see that it's a joke, it's probably a joke. Go ahead and lift that shit off his table. <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't lift anything off anybody's table. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You just enjoyed it more than me. I just, oh, I, yeah. I didn't I, get in. None of that story leading yeah. up to it did anything for me. I don't know if it's a fact I just watched uh, Serpent the Rainbow not so long ago, which had voodoo yeah. more than witches in it. I also well, I like thought it, it was yeah. a little, uh, I'm not sure how much of voodoo and, and witchery they were oh, yeah. mixing up too. Cause some of yeah. it seemed like, yeah, it was part voodoo and then part like witch, Wiccan, whatever you want to call it. And maybe that was on purpose. I, I don't well, know. I, yeah, yeah, I found it interesting too, and I did like because they they send her to like an asylum. Like she wakes up in an asylum and's like lost her memory or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I and I liked it. I liked that too. I thought you know it was good. She got back to the town, and you know, and there was mm-hmm. still bef- you know some bad things going on. You didn't know right. who to trust, right. and then it uh, it went to a giant like 
don't know. <laughs> well, let me let, let me take a shot at this. I bet you're going to give it a very very mild grape ape up because you liked it up until the end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure. going to yeah. on it because I didn't even enjoy that ride. Now, will I come back sure. to this some other time and enjoy it more? You'll, you'll have it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's be. very possible because I do admit sometimes, and I'm going to admit it this time. This could be a mood thing. Obviously, it wasn't grabbing me, so maybe I just was not in the mood. Sure. Uh, to where this was one of those movies where I say every now and then it felt like homework, doing homework yeah. for the show a little bit. Um, but that's what I was doing, you know, more or less. <laughs> um, so I'm going to on it um, with the I'm going to preface that by saying I, I could like it more at a different time. Although I have to say I don't remember liking it, but I don't remember disliking sure. it. I just remember I saw it. Don't remember much about it. This makes you a big jerk. That's all. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's me. So <laughs> I was flipping the movie off. You know, I was I was calling it yeah. names. You yeah, know? you were. I bet. I believe yeah. it. Yeah. So um, anyway, let's move on. Let's move on because okay. I, I I think we're gonna have more fun talking about our next film from 1957. <laughs> so about ten years late or ten years earlier. Yeah. Uh, we had a movie unleashed onto the public that goes by the title <laughs> "Daughter of Doctor Jekyll." <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I got We're, a bone uh, to pick we got. This, I, there's bones. There's bones going around here. So let but me. Let's, I, I, I want to pick a bone with it, but I'm nervous. I'm nervous. So. I understand. I understand. Let me get you out, <laughs> uh, movie guy, and get a, uh, a short, another short storyline synopsis. Uh, here we go. Okay. I know this ain't gonna be right because there's things sticking <laughs> out, sticking out like 3D, like at us right now. They're like, what? So okay, what? here we go. Yeah, okay. All right. A young woman discovers she is a daughter of the infamous Doctor Jekyll. And begins to believe that she may also have a split personality, one of whom is a ruthless killer. Okay, so Gloria Talbot, all right, from I Married, from I Married a Monster from Outer Space, from the Cyclops, uh, and John Agar from the Mole yes. People, Revenge of the Creature, Tarantula. Uh, they can. show up uh, to. Gloria Talbot, what would be known as, I guess, her guardian, not her father, but her guardian, the guy who raised yeah. her, <laughs> to announce that they're going to get married on her yeah. 21st birthday. Am I right so far? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm amazing. Sir. I can't believe I remember all this. And <laughs> when they tell the guardian, he's a little like, oh, well, I don't know. He's got to tell Gloria Talbot something. All right. He yes. promised the dad that he would tell her. So he basically says, you're Dr. Jekyll's kid. Yeah. But you got a lot of money. You just got some money. You got yeah. some money, yep. which I, right away, uh, John, I looked over to NGO. I was like, John Agar. To, to, yeah, to John Agar, her bra size just went up one size, at least <laughs> yeah. one size. You know, I oh, yeah. Like, yeah, he was happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he, but the, but the doctor convinced her, convinces her on some level because she's, because she's Dr. Jekyll's daughter. She has to have, she has to have some of that Jekyll juice in her. Yeah. Right, she's got to have a little bit of the Jekyll juice in her. So, um, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Though, right? Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's yeah. so. And then there's murders afoot. Now, yes. here's the problem. Immediately, immediately, we're not giving anything away here. All right, we're not giving anything away. Immediately, they start with the force of a bulldozer trying to push the Doctor Jekyll story square into werewolf land. Yeah. Basically saying Dr. Jekyll was a werewolf. Yeah. That's basically what they're saying. I, yes. I, I, I it, it, seriously, I, <laughs> for about two days now, I've been thinking, should I turn my horror card in? Because if I'm wrong on this, <laughs> I'm done. I, right. I've just, I'm going to give up because everything I've, now, I didn't know Dr. Jekyll was a werewolf. <laughs> well, or not, I don't Dr. think Jekyll, Robert Louis Stevenson Hyde, even Mr. knew that Hyde he yeah, yeah. is not a werewolf, right? Is that where, okay, Mr. Hyde is not a werewolf, right? No, no, no. That's no, no. what she turned into. Right, 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 right. right. So what they're saying so, is that yeah. Mr. Hyde <laughs> yeah. is a werewolf, which clearly was exactly what Robert Louis Stevenson was going for, right? When he wrote the <laughs> when he wrote Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So I, yes, so instead I of turning know. into a I meaner guy. Yeah. yeah, it's instead of turning <laughs> into a meaner guy, they're just saying, nah, it wasn't it. Nah, he's a werewolf. Yeah. He had a werewolf yeah. serum, gave himself his Jekyll juice, and then he turned into a werewolf. Wow. Yeah, wow. I, I was seriously getting nervous for a minute. Yeah. I almost called you on the phone and was like, wait a second, buddy. You got to let me know here because if I, I'm like wrong about this. No, you're not wrong. I, nope. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Because I was like, 
No, I always thought it was like some sort of like Neanderthal like type monster. Never really specified what he was, did it? Ever? What, no, Mr. He Hyde just, was? Mr. It was just like a, it a was, bad version of him. It was it? just like his a, alter ego. Yeah, it was yeah, just his alter ego. Like his, now he yeah. would he okay, would physically Whew, he would I feel better. <laughs> Seriously, I've been really <laughs> lamenting about it. Right. He would he would physically change. Yeah. But in a in a realistic if there is such a thing. In a more realistic kind of way. I mean, he would <laughs> he would change, and people wouldn't recognize him in things and stuff like that. Yeah. So yes, there was that, but was but no, he spoke. I mean, he yeah. rented a room for that barmaid or they used to call him bar wench, I guess, sort of a hooker. Mm -hmm. So he, oh, he wow, wow, rents wow. that room and he, he terrorizes her for I don't know how long and finally kills her. That's the story. Uh, not a werewolf necessarily. <laughs> I mean, but but the thing is, is they just. It was just matter of fact. They kept making sure you yeah. knew because in the, like the first couple minutes, I was writing a few notes down while I was watching it. And it's like the first five minutes. I looked over to Angio. I was like, did he just give the correct uh, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde mythos and then put some icing on top that was a werewolf? <laughs> And she said, yes. I was like, okay, I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure. <laughs> now, I had seen this before. I just didn't remember it. I didn't remember. I remembered I remembered something different about it. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I just remembered something else. Um, so, yeah. So, I was a little like, oh, boy, 1957, them driving and matinee shows, man. No wonder kids are calling the monster Frankenstein. Uh -huh. yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what yeah. the hell? So, yes. So basically, it is a who done it? Who's the werewolf? Yes. And the doctor, the the um, guardian, guardian. Doctor, thank you, the yeah. guardian. Yeah, he keeps trying to hypnotize her to, I guess, naturally get some Jekyll juice going. <laughs> uh -huh. Or he's yeah. hypnotizing her, and making her believe that she's doing something wrong. Yes. Um, and stuff. And put, and then, yeah. And then like make her put dirt on her clothes and blood. And yeah. Stuff. So trying to hide the true, yeah. the true Jekyll wolf or Hyde yeah. wolf. <laughs> Where hide? I don't know what the hell. I, I, so yeah, are we <laughs> right now? People are listening going, wait, they're supposed to smoke weed when they're done with the show. What the hell's going on here? What are we talking yeah, about? Seriously. You know? yeah. I don't know. Harley, uh, what you got for it? You know, um, huh. This film's, mm, it's not good. I, I didn't really particularly like this film a whole mm. lot. Um, it's, uh, I don't think it's like really, I don't know. I just didn't really like it. I mm. didn't really like it much at all. And then it did. It threw me that whole thing. Well, at first it was okay because they go, they get to the place and you know us, Tim, we both like, you know, and they show like a, a mansion in the distance or in the darkness, and it's a little, it's a model. Right. I love yeah. it. Yeah, I they too. zoom in on it. You know, I'm, I'm in. Man, you sucked me right in. Right. I'm like, all right, here we go. You know, they've used so, that one before. You've seen it. You've yeah. seen that castle or wood yeah. gold mansion. Yep. Yep. So I'm excited, you know, yeah. but, um, and then even the, the storyline pretty much of them and, you know, getting the house and things like that. But I really have a problem when things amp up, like, okay, yes, we're going to get married. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Well, no, you are. Yeah, you're the daughter of Dr. Jekyll. And and then she's like, no, to John Edgar, you must leave because I'm bad. And, you know, he ain't going nowhere. He mm -hmm. is not going mm -hmm. nowhere. Right. It's a lot right. of money to be had. In this, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> so, he wasn't going nowhere before. He was no, taking a look at going, hey, man, this, yeah, I got, this yeah. is a pretty good deal I got going on yeah. here, you know? He yeah. already seemed like, yeah, you said he already seemed like a nice fella, so I don't think he was definitely wasn't going anywhere when money's involved. Well, they said right away, they said right away to the Guardian guy, the doctor, yeah. by the way, who was, I believe, Dr. Loomis. Yes. That was two mm -hmm. Dr. Loomises in a week that I was checking out there. Now, this Dr. <laughs> Loomis is a little different than the other yeah. Dr. Loomis we know. Yes, he is. But this yeah. Dr. Loomis uh, had been uh, sending uh, Gloria Talbot money, and yeah. she assumed it was from him. She assumed yes. that the money was coming uh, from him, but he lets her know, no, no, that's from, that's a, uh, uh, that's your inheritance basically. Yeah. You know, that's money. I don't have much money because right beforehand, I think this is to let you know, just to reassure you that John Agar is an okay guy. They yeah. said they're going to get married and they ain't going to take no money from him. And that's when he yeah. says, well, yeah. you're not taking money from me. This is her money. Yeah. And then at that yeah. point, that's when John Agar goes, Jackpot. Yep, <laughs> so, yep. <laughs> um, 
He takes them to the like the tomb to show them. Yes, you know, like the little prove there's everything. A, yeah. yeah, there's mm-hmm. a, a a real makeshift a laboratory down there. Yeah, you know? right. And, and then you see old handsome or uh, Harold handsome faces in there. He's right. kind of he's like there's a gentleman. It's like uh, Rondo. Oh, uh, he looks junior. a little. He looks a little bit like Rondo Hatton. Yeah, that was yeah, the, he's the, like a junior. He's his stand-in. Yeah, if he ever needed a stand. <laughs> right, he's a brute. He's a brute. That's one of the employees he, of yeah. the estate. Yeah. Yeah. And he's been in a lot of these films sure, too. That scene, right, yeah. right. so anyways, yeah, you see that they show that guy, then you know there's something else afoot, and he's the one that's always talking werewolf talk too as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they he's keep been, the whole movie. They're they're worried about even the full moon. It's not even yeah. about juice anymore. It's not even about no. the Jekyll juice. It's about the full moon. They really yeah. just take it and they keep constantly steering it away to the point where you're like, why did yeah. you even call this Jekyll? Yeah. I don't even know. Uh, daughter of Dr. Werewolf. <laughs> yeah. You just called daughter of the werewolf. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, the only thing I could think of is a rights thing, but yeah, you can't have the rights to just a werewolf. Right. I mean, the wolf man. Okay. Okay. I got you. You know, if you can't yeah. call the daughter of the wolf man, I get it. Cause that would make sense too. That would work if it was, yeah. it would work a hell of a lot better actually. But, yeah, sure would. Yeah, but for, I don't, I don't, I don't know, Ben. I really don't know. I tried to look into it a little bit. I didn't find <laughs> anything. I'm like, I mean, that information <laughs> is very possibly lost to time. It's not that important in the grand scheme of things, you know. So it was to me, though. Damn it. Sure. Um, yeah. So they keep pushing the moon, the werewolf, and all this other stuff, and you're just left there thinking, I don't know. And look, it was directed by Edgar G. Elmer. Who did, uh, well, he did The Amazing Transparent Man, okay? Okay. But he did uh, Man from Planet X, which wasn't bad. That was okay. Yeah. I had, I think, the same set, the same little miniature set. <laughs> uh, Detour, which is a absolute classic film, noir crime film. I mean, just okay. amazing. And he yeah. did my favorite, The Black Cat. He did the old Black oh, Cat movie. So this guy knows really? what he's doing. He's done a lot of stuff, yeah. a lot of cult, a lot of things like that. Um but boy, he was given a turkey to bake. <laughs> he had to put his yeah. hand up the wazoo to put the stuffing up and lost his watch up in it. You know, so, <laughs> Something. Dude. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, now, the other thing, too, that I noticed, and I'll hand it back to you, was that um, when... Oh, it's okay. You don't have to hand well, it back. If you well, know. when things were coming together, I'm telling yeah. you what, John Agar went full on Sherlock Holmes. He did, didn't he? Because yeah. they had... you, you As the viewer, you're like... What is going on? And then John Agar swoops in at the end and explains everything that's going on, going on <laughs> yeah. even though he looks clueless through the entire film. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, I had a different opinion of this movie. Okay. I, I mean, I think we're going to have an opposite week here because I found yeah. this to be silly fun okay. because it was from 1957, John Agar, Gloria Talbot, uh, that right there. Yeah. you got to leave all your... Everything at the door. You got to leave it <laughs> yeah. at the door. Um, and I found it fascinating just to see how hard they would steer this thing toward a werewolf. And man, uh, I was not let down on that account. No, no, you were not. No. I want to punch this movie for that. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah. I seriously was questioning myself. I thought, what have I been doing all these years? I thought, I mean, I, I, how could that got past me? I'm like, right, you know? right. Well, uh, and then uh, the werewolf good. itself. Oof. Okay, so first of all, oh. they telegraph who the werewolf is in the very opening shot. So, yeah. and that is cheesy. Man, is oh. that cheesy? The very opening and the very beginning of the movie, like the very first and the very last thing are super bookendy, but they're super cheesy book bookends of the film. Yeah, and I mean, if that's a werewolf. Then I thought of you. It, it was uh, a little bit of a uh, more the hair eyebrow monster. A little bit of an eyebrow monster with some fangs. On the girl, yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know, Harley. I, I just well, it was funny too when they they you know, show his hands like there's one he's I got on the grate and he's holding the grate and he's turning into the werewolf. It was supposed to be hair on his hands, but it. it, it I basically it painted hair on his hands. I will explain was, that. That yeah, actually you. was one of the things I really enjoyed about the film because go uh, back, trust me on this one, yeah. go back and watch it closer. Now, 
They didn't do it well, no. but they used the same camera trick that they used uh, in the, what was it, the 19, like 31 Frederick March version. Yeah. Okay. So what they did was that they had the stage paint makeup and with the black and white photography and under certain colored lightings, yeah. it doesn't show up. So how they did the transformation in the original one was they had all these different stages of makeup on Frederick March's face. And as yeah. they turned up and down like red, blue lights, it, it appeared was, yeah. that his face changed on camera. The most incredible effect, one of the most incredible effects I've ever seen on film yeah, to I, this I, day. I, I'll agree with you on that, but I just... The, I, well, they just I didn't do it, it as well. They just yeah, didn't do it, it as well in this one <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I liked they were doing it. Yeah. But, they, but it wasn't dramatic enough like the like the 31 was. And then instead yeah. of it just being like facial, um, like makeup making him look gooier and uglier or something, they were they were going for hair. So yeah. I see what you're saying. So they, they 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 it was a good idea, but it didn't come off because it looked like either veins or something like that. And yeah. it, and it wasn't dramatic enough. You could barely tell it was happening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And in the original one, you could really see it. It's like, oh, my God, when you see it. Yeah. The first time I saw it, to this day, I'd watch it going, wow, wow, is yeah. that good, you know? Um, so I appreciated the fact they did that. Um, but it yeah. looked like you're, like, looking at his hand waiting for the effect to happen, and it never really does. <laughs> yeah. But you know what they're trying. Know, like, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> yeah. But kudos for trying. I mean, I, I give sure. him that, you know, or whatever. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of, God, he's just a goofy i don't know man he looked more like a hide than a werewolf to me <laughs> so i'm thinking can you set you set the whole movie up to be a wolf man or a werewolf yeah and then the reveal is no he's hide with a couple big teeth <laughs> gets a little hairier well, that was oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he was not even have good mutton chops at all, <laughs> right. and he wasn't much hairier than your average. I don't know, guy you see at a convention, really. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it wasn't really that bad. I, yeah. I don't know. So that part, I'm with you. I'm like, eh, I don't know. But uh, yeah, yeah. This movie, I don't know. It drug me along better than the witches did. Maybe because I was just like, what the hell? And I enjoy <laughs> yeah. that sometimes. You know, yeah. I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Mm. You're not, you're not, not having it. You're not having any of it, no, are you? No, uh-uh. No, I was sad. I was sad <laughs> yeah. about this one. I yeah. was sad. Maybe question myself. Right, right. <laughs> well, then let's not forget, too. I mean, they try everything. Even John Agar is reading a book with this awful, like, third grade illustration saying, Demon Werewolf? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So ah. here's, here's a couple more things. So now, uh, maybe it was how we both went into both these movies. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it's a, it's the, the, it's not made. This movie's not made bad, oh, and it uh, actually kind of makes sense if you sit there and watch it. Like, okay, but you, it's hard for you to get past what they're telling you, you know, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. It's little very bit. silly, silly entertainment. But if you go into this and take it serious, you're going to come out uh, with movie rage. You're going to come out <laughs> insane. You're not going to know what the hell's going on. And and last up, Ben Harley. I don't think I don't think I could poop on this movie for one fact alone. Let's how? Know. How in the hell? Not only did they Mack truck its way over to a werewolf film, but they yeah. had an angry villager finale. They the did. Pitchforks and torches. <laughs> they did. Oh, oh man. man. That, yeah, yeah, this is definitely, I don't know. I, I don't, <sighs> I don't know if I say I want to poop on it, but. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can poop. I pooped on the other one. That's fine. I get it. I'm gonna give it a real mild, funny, silly, great bait, but because I did enjoy it, I had more entertainment with it. Uh, It's shorter. It's 20 minutes. I was hoping. Yeah. It's only an hour and eight minutes or nine minutes long. Yeah. It's short. It's really short. Right. And it's it that that 20 extra minutes or whatever it is on the witches just killed me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's another thing I like about these old movies. They're pretty short. So, like, they don't overstay their welcome very much. Yeah. Um, No, that's for sure. Right. And so, and and maybe it brought me back a little bit to, oh, man, this was a total matinee with the opening and the (laughs) ending, you know? And it's like, man, if those movies, if those movies got girls at the drive in, 
to snuggle up to you in the front yeah. of your beat up pickup truck or something like that. Uh, the best movie going. <laughs> hey, I want a time machine, man. That's all I'm telling That's right. you. That's all I'm telling you. But uh, anyway, well, I'm going to give it just a, a mild, just a mild, just silly, cheesy grape apes. I, only yeah. I was guffawed by it. It, it just, you know. Sometimes that a movie doing that to me is uh, th- that's a big deal. <laughs> that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. I will agree with you on that one. But. And I did not remember <laughs> the details of this film. I can tell you that much. Um, no. And it didn't look that bad. It was eight, no. sixteen by nine widescreen. Looked okay. Yeah. Uh, seen a lot worse. So like John Agar's shirt or jacket he oh. had on at one point. I was like, and I like the jacket. Okay, tell me. I, I will tell you this. I would wear that jacket, but I'd have to wear it with a monkey in a grinder or something. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I do know what you're talking about. I look I over. wear it as the potentate hate. I would. Oh, yeah. I'd wear that. Yeah. yeah. But it was driving me nuts in the movie. Oh, yeah, so. absolutely. I looked over to Angie. I was like, wait, did he just break out of prison or is he going to clown college? <laughs> yeah. Which one is this? Then what does he do? Then he shows up in the next scene wearing a tight turtleneck. <laughs> I was like, this guy, whoever did this guy's wardrobe? Sorry, sorry. You know, it didn't, didn't work a whole lot after that. But uh, again, I'm going to, and look, he's a Dr. Loomis in it, even though it's spelled L O M A S, like Lamas, but they kept saying Loomis. So uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the hell else to say. I mean, Robert Louis Stevenson is probably right now might haunt me after yeah, this. He might. Right. But at the same time, <laughs> I'm going to give it a mild, cheesy, great bet. Ben, ben Harley on this one. Yeah. I am Awful. on the witches, and I think he's given a mild, great bet. Yeah, uh, mild. To the so, we're, so it's opposite week. So we yeah. we disagreed, we battled, and we came to a stalemate. <laughs> That's right. Because I don't think either one of these movies are worth us fighting too hard for either way. So, no, but, uh, no. I, I, I think they would agree as well. Right. The films themselves. Yeah. Well, like I said, <laughs> Nigel Neal was like, yeah, it's kind of sucked. I mean, so I'm a the, yeah, the witches, you know. Awesome. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure Edgar G. Almer said, I think Detour might have been better than this film. I think. I think <laughs> you know, so, uh, yeah. Well, uh, speaking of clown colleges next week, Mr. Ben Holly, we're going to be dealing yeah. with Medusa and clowns next week. So there's yeah. a little teaser. A well, little a teaser, teaser for friend. you. So <laughs> until next week, Mr. Ben Harley, stay spooky and we'll talk to you then. Keep it creepy, people. You've been listening to the Tim Owen Harley Show, brought to you by ScreenPrintingFactory.com your affordable one-stop solution to all your screen printing needs. <laughs>